Jack looked at the small window. That would be a tight fit too. He went out headfirst and barely squeezed through. Jack fell onto the snowy ground. The snow was still drifting down. The air was misty white. Jack heard barking and howling. He moved carefully toward the noise. At first, he couldn't see the dog sled, but when he got closer, he counted nine si Siberian Huskies. They had thick fur, big heads, and pointy ears. The lead dog barked at him. Jack stopped. He's telling you to climb on, said Annie. She was standing on the back of the sled. The seal hunter stood next to her in the snow. Jack jumped onto the sled next to Annie. The seal hunter cracked a long whip. Mush, he shouted. The huskies dashed off in a whirl of snow. Above them flew the snowy owl. Chapter four, the snow house. The dog sled skimmed silently over the frozen tundra. The seal hunter ran alongside it. Sometimes he cracked his whip against the ice. The snowdrifts looked like white, giant white sculptures as the sun slipped behind the frozen hills. Then a full orange moon rose in the sky. The moonlight was small. The moonlight lit a small rounded igloo in front of them. The dog slowed, then stopped. Jack stepped off the sled. Annie went to un help unhitch the dogs. Jack took his book out and read about igloos. The word igloo means house in the language of native Arctic people. The dry house is built with blocks of snow. Dry snow is good wall material because it keeps in the heat. The temperature inside the igloo can be 65 degrees warmer than the temperature on, out, on the outside. Jack took out his notebook. He pulled off his mitten just long enough to write. Igloo means house. Come on, Jack, said Annie. She and the seal hunter were waiting for him in front of the igloo. The dogs were leashed together outside. Jack hurried to join them. The hunter pushed aside animal skins covering the entrance. They stepped inside. A fat candle burned brightly. Shadows danced on the walls of ice and snow. Jack and Annie sat on a fur-covered platform. They watched as the seal hunter moved about. First, he lit a small stove. Then he slipped outside. He came back with a snowball and chunks of frozen meat. He put the snowball in a pot over the stove. Then he added the meat. What's he making? asked Annie. Jack pulled out his book and found a picture of the hunter cooking. He and Annie read the words silently. There was a time when near, nearly all of the Arctic people's food and clothing and tools came from Arctic animals, especially the seal. Nearly every part of the seal could be eaten. Lamps were fueled with seal fat, clothing was made from seal skin, and knives and needles were carved from seal bones. Hey, he must be boiling seal meat, said Jack. The poor seals, said Annie. The seal hunter looked up. They're not poor, he said. They help us because they know we would die without them. Oh, said Annie. In return, we always thank the animal spirits, said the hunter. How do you do that, said Jack. We have many special ceremonies, said the seal hunter. He reached under the fur-covered platform and took out two wooden masks. Soon there will be a ceremony to honor the spirit of the polar bear, he said. I carved these masks for the ceremony. Polar bears, said Annie. Yes, said the hunter. Just as the seal has given us many gifts, so has the polar bear. Like what, said Jack. Long ago, the polar bear taught us how to live in the ice and snow, said the seal hunter. Taught you, said Jack. I mean, can you give us some facts? The seal hunter smiled. Yes, he said. A polar bear catches a seal when the seal comes up to breathe through the hole in the ice. The oldest seal hunters watched the polar bear and learned. This is how my father taught me to hunt seal, as his father taught him. That's a good fact, said Jack. The very first of my people learned to make igloos from polar bears, said the hunter. Polar bears build snow houses by digging caves in the drifts. Another good fact, said Jack. Sometimes the polar bear can even teach people to fly, said the seal hunter. That's an amazing fact, said Annie. Jack smiled. The rest sounded like true facts, he said, but I know that's pretend. 
The hunter just laughed, then turned back to his cooking. That's why he wasn't surprised to hear about the treehouse, Jack thought. If he believes polar bears can fly, he probably would believe anything. The seal hunter lifted the chunks of boiled seal out of his pot. He dropped them into a wooden bucket and gave it to Annie. Let's feed the dogs, he said. Oh boy, said Annie. She followed the hunter outside, swinging the bucket. Jack quickly threw his notebook and the Arctic book into his pack. He started to follow them. Then his gaze fell on the two polar bear masks. He picked them up to get a better look. Each was carved in the shape of a polar bear's face with a blunt nose and round ears. There were two holes for eyes and a strap to hold it on your head. Suddenly, howls split the air. The dogs were barking and growling. Annie squealed. Are the dogs attacking her? Jack wondered. Annie! Still holding the bear masks, Jack charged out of the igloo. Chapter 5. You're it. The dogs were barking wildly at two small creatures playing in the moonlight. Polar bear babies, cried Annie. One roly-poly cub leaped onto the other. Then they both rolled through the snow. Hi, little bears, Annie called. The cubs jumped up and shook themselves like wet puppies. Then they scampered toward Annie, who rushed to greet them. Hi, 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 she called. Wait, shouted Jack. Where's their mother? He looked around for the mother bear, but she was nowhere in sight. Maybe they're orphans, he thought. Jack looked back at Annie. She was rustling with the little bears in the snow. She was laughing so hard that she couldn't stand. Jack started laughing too. He carefully put the bear masks into his pack. Then he ran to join Annie. She was running with one of the cubs across the snowy tundra. One of them raced to her, tagged her, then raced away. Annie ran after the bear and tagged him back. You're it, she said. Jack and the other cub joined in. Soon Jack and Annie and the two cubs were all chasing each other over the moonlit snow. They ran until the two cubs fell down ahead of them. The cubs lay perfectly still. Panting, Jack and Annie stared at them. Are they hurt? Annie wondered out loud. Jack and Annie ran to the cubs. Then, just as they leaned down to see if they were all right, the cubs jumped up. They pushed Jack and Annie over and scampered away. They were pretending, said Jack. He laughed. Jack and Annie charged after the cubs. They ran over the white tundra until they came to a frozen sea. Jack looked around. We're pretty far from the igloo. I don't hear the huskies anymore, he said. Maybe we should go back. In a minute, said Annie. Look! The bear cubs had scooted up the snowbank. They were on their backs, sliding down the bank onto the ice-covered sea. Jack and Annie laughed. It's like sledding, said Annie. Let's try it. Okay, said Jack, but then we have to go back. Jack and Annie, uh, Jack followed Annie up the snowbank. He clutched his pack in his arms. Annie lay on her back. She whooped as she slid down the ice. Jack followed her. Watch out below, he shouted. The little bears were sitting at the bottom of the snowbank. One gently whacked Jack in the face with her furry paw. Then she lay down. I'm tired too, said Annie. Yeah, said Jack. Let's rest for just a minute. Jack and Annie looked up at the orange moon as they lay beside the cubs. All they could hear was the wind and the soft breathing of the cubs. That was fun, said Annie. It was, said Jack, but we better head back to the igloo. The seal hunter's probably looking for us. Plus, we have to solve the riddle. Jack rolled onto his side and tried to stand. Crack! Uh-oh, he said. He went back down onto his knees. I think we're on thin ice. What do you mean, said Andy. Annie. She started to stand. Another crack ran out, rang out. Uh-oh, she said. She carefully lay back down. The polar bear cubs moved closer to Jack and Annie. They made little crying sounds. Jack wanted to cry too, but he took a deep breath. Let's see what our book says, he said. He reached into his pack for the Arctic book. He took the masks out first and handed them to Annie. I took these from the igloo by mistake, he said. As he started to reach for his Arctic book, he heard the loudest crack of all. Crack! We're not even moving and the ice is cracking, said Annie. 
Just then, there was a new sound, a low snorting sound. It came from the top of the snowbank about 50 feet away. Jack looked up. Staring down at them was a giant polar bear. The polar bear mother, whispered Annie. So we are about halfway through the book and it doesn't look good for them. Uh, do you think that they will get out of the safe or do you think that something terrible could happen? Well, uh, we pray that everyone has a blessed day and that you experienced his love today. Stay safe from all of us here at Park River Bible Camp.